welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shivani Gharat. Today we are catching up with two exceptional women. First up, we have Anupriya Acharya, South Asia CEO of Publicis Group. We are catching up with her and speaking to her about the outlook for the industry for the second half of the calendar year with the abundant Indian festival season to look forward to. What are their key focus areas and what is driving growth? And are clients sitting tight or spending more post-elections? Listen in. Anupriya, welcome to CNBC TV 18 again and it's so good to have you on the show again. Thank you. I'm equally excited to be here. <laughs> Anupriya, when we met around Goa Fest, which was just a couple of weeks ago, you said that the first half of the year has been slightly challenging, but you were waiting for the elections to get over, for things to settle down. How are things looking as we uh, step into the second half of the year now? So indeed, when we met a uh, few months back, I think, yeah. Uh, that point in time, uh, clearly, I mean, there seemed to be some slowdown in the consumption across categories. But the larger thing was that everybody was in a bit of a wait and watch hmm. sort of a position. Uh, because, of course, it was the election year and elections were going full swing at that point in time. And everybody was working off an interim budget. Uh, since then, of course, uh, we have the elections are behind us. We have a 100 day plan in front of us. Uh, and of course, expectation of a great budget. Uh, that coupled with, of course, all the forecasts on above average monsoon. Yeah. You can see it's already started yes. uh, right on time. Um, and then, of course, H2 always has like a lot of festivals lined up. Hmm. So, you know, given all of this, clearly H2 is looking extremely buoyant. And definitely we are at a very different space today as compared to when we last met. So how are clients reacting post uh, elections? Uh, you know, you must have met up with like a couple of them. What are they? All of them. Yeah, yeah. all <laughs> of them. What are they saying? Uh, clear optimism. Hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of work which is happening around, you know, across brands and categories as hmm. they get ready for the festival season. Hmm. Uh, so it's, it's going to be like obviously a very crucial part of the year. You know, everybody wants to capitalize on the increased consumer spending that comes with the festive mm. season. Nobody wants to miss that. Uh, so there's a lot of work happening around, uh, you know, new product launches, uh, brand extensions. A lot of clients are looking at uh, geographical expansion, a lot of festival promos. Uh, so our teams are like really, really busy. And uh, there, there is, uh, you know, a lot of optimism as we get into H2. Great. Uh, we have seen over the past few months how holding companies, ad advertising holding companies mm. are flexing their mm. AI muscle, mm. uh, you know, there is uh, some partnership with like a chip maker that is announced every few weeks that yeah. has become a trend yeah. for 2024. So how have, you know, the agencies and advertising holding companies evolved uh, from, you know, just uh, speaking about cost efficiency and production efficiency when it comes to AI to actually delivering unique AI focused solutions for their clients? I think there's a lot of work, Shabani, which has already happened in this area, which is creating like really exciting work hmm. uh, with using, uh, you know, creativity at the heart hmm. and, and enhanced by, uh, hmm. by AI or generative AI. So I think we have done enough and more work in that area. And of course, it's all very exciting. I don't know whether you got a chance to see uh, the work uh, which won a gold also in Cannes last year, which is the Airtel 5G hmm. launch. Uh, work that was like advanced use of uh, AI mm -hmm. and of course creativity and data and technology uh, and similarly in more recent times there has been work around say it with Oreo it's a very interesting work that has uh, uh, been done by the teams over here and uh, a lot of work on PepsiCo for example mm -hmm. uh, which uses a lot of data uh, as well as uh, Gen AI and AI uh, predictive analytics and all of that so uh, so all in all, there's a lot of work which has happened and this area will continue to evolve and the, as we move along, the train, teams also get more and more trained. And as we know, this area is not a still area. This is evolving like on a daily basis and, and the models are becoming better and better. Yeah. So that, to my mind, uh, is something that is like, you know, at the core of, uh, almost at the core, it's no longer uh, something uh, peripheral. Hmm. Uh, that being said, I think, uh, yes, uh, I mean, there's a lot of investment on AI beyond that as well. Hmm. And it can, the potential of AI is humongous. Hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, and a lot of it depends on, uh, you know, if you are sort of um, structuring uh, the whole thing around the right set of data and coming out with the right set of relevant solutions for solving real business uh, challenges. Yes, but still we've seen a lot of marketers and hmm. clients hmm. across different sectors are still a little bit overwhelmed a little mm. bit confused on some of AI's applications. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as their partners, how are you trying to reorient them? What are some of the ways in which you are doing so? Firstly, I think it is very unfair to say the clients are confused or overwhelmed. Are they not? <laughs> Are they, not? they are not. They are not. The fact is that there is a lot of noise around AI. There's a lot of noise and there is a lot of amplification, but amplification of the noise. isn't that overwhelming? No, hear me out. So there is a lot of noise and a lot of, you know, sort of over amplification happening in this area. Anybody who has like a phone or a, a mobile phone or a, you know, a desktop, a, a mobile or an, an access to an internet is huh. figuring out ways to crack AI and the, all the new models which keep coming up, you know, from various sort of parties. Uh, so it is an area which is moving very fast. Yeah. And hence, obviously, excitement and a bit of sort of, you know, so what next is, is obviously, you know, something that is to be expected. Uh, so with our clients on a more sort of a elevated level, if I was to really talk, I mean, I think it's a full partnership uh, mm. that we have with our clients. Uh, there is, uh, you know, everybody is trying to pull in the push in the same direction to find uh, real, real solutions for real, uh, you know, business uh, challenges. Um, so, of course, there's a, I mean, we continue to train, the models are evolving, we yeah. continue to train our people. Uh, we ourselves have seen firsthand how the, you know, prompt to uh, text was very good for, has been good for some time, but prompt to, for example, image and prompt to video is still sort of, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, way to distance travel on, on that front. So we work closely on that. We train our teams on that. And all of that is in partnership with the clients as well. Uh, and, and beyond that, of course, there's a lot of work happening also on the ethical side of AI. Yeah. And in our uh, business specifically, you know, where there's a lot of, in AI, if there's a lot of usage of open internet, hmm. uh, then copywriting can be an issue. So, I mean, there's a lot of work. Copywriting can yes. be issue, then yes. biases. Exactly. Biases is a big thing. Yeah. So, we train, uh, continue to train our teams on that. Hmm. And then obviously in partnership with the clients. So. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that anybody is uh, more confused than the other. <laughs> you know, Anupriya, with AI becoming the talk of the town, there is yeah. so many discussions going on yeah. on applications of AI and Gen AI. Yeah. Um, you know, in everyday, uh, you know, workflows in an advertising yeah. agency. Uh, during a brainstorming session, you know, or a meeting or something mm -hmm. like that, what is the most unexpected or amusing instance, you know, that you can share with us that has happened when, in, with regards to AI? Well, what comes to my mind, Shivani, is actually before the brainstorming, what, com what comes to my mind uh, is a WhatsApp forward that I got some few days back. Uh, maybe you might have got it as well. And it talked about that how, you know, I want uh, AI to do my dishes and my laundry uh, so that I'm able to sort of do art and I'm able to do poetry and all of that and not vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So I think it really hits the nail on the head. <laughs> We wanted to do that and, yeah, and yeah. not really sort of and take AI away the more interesting. And doing poetry and writing and what not for us. <laughs> so I thought, so pretty on similar, similar, uh, in the similar area. Um, you know, last time we were chatting here in this room only. Yeah. And I, I remember talking to you about the hackathon, which we had just initiated. That's right. And, you know, basically to crowdsource ideas hmm. that could solve for real sort of business uh, problems uh, using generative AI and using yeah. AI. And uh, of course, it was a whole sort of organization wide contest and everybody participated in that. And there were teams which were like the chatter on the floor was largely a team saying that, OK, I'm just going to give a command to this generative AI to come up with an award winning idea that is going to like sort of win the award. And on the other side, the tech teams which were which were going to code this all and bring it alive to life and put it to life, all these yeah. ideas to life. They were also hoping that, you know, if only I could just, just solve for it. And all they want is to win the prize without <laughs> having to work very hard. But um, so, yeah, that, so that that was uh, everybody has this huge expectation of AI that, you know, they are you're just going to give a prompt and everything is going to be prompt. The reality is very, very far away from it. In fact, that it is not about it is not about the just the, what generative AI can do, but how well you can put it to task hmm. and how well you define the territories, how well you define the data that it needs to sort of, you know, uh, read uh, how well you prompt it. Past couple of years yeah. have been very, very, you know, full of uncertainty. 
as somebody who's a leader, what is some of or one of the superpowers mm. that you know that you would like to have to like you know sail through all of this uncertainty? Uncertainty. Well, firstly, I must say that I love uncertainty. <laughs> That's what really you know makes us human. Yeah. And and want to come to office every day. Yeah. And uh, we were just talk talking about the cricket match last night, yeah. right? You were saying you watched it and it was exciting till whatever time you watched it. Now. Imagine that you already knew that India was going to win it. Hmm. Like, would people be watching it? Will people in be my heart? I did. And, yeah, that's okay. But still, you weren't sure. <laughs> there was uncertainty in that. <laughs> so you know, uncertainty is what really sort of brings us to life, and that's why yeah. you know we are humans, and and we you know live with that. So it's there is no way that you can wish away uncertainty, and in fact, it is an exciting thing, and that's what makes us like ensure that our ears are to the ground. We are listening. We are constantly thinking hmm. we are constantly so all of that and constantly navigating you know coming out with new solutions and all if we are about to talk about the workplace and so if you are asking me about the superpower the superpower has always been and will be the talent that we get yeah. in our in our organization and in our industry and uh, i think that uh, if we are able to inspire them train them well to be able to navigate this world in 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years down the line, <laughs> then I think that's a great superpower yeah. to have. And it's a people's business after all. It's a all. people's business. So, a lot of action in the coming months. We have the festive season. Uh, Anupriya, what are some of the key focus areas for the group for the next couple of months where you will be firing all cylinders? We are a very client-centric organization. Client is always at the center of what we do. Uh, so one, our focus is on all like the right products and solutions which can aid clients, you know, movement in the market. Um, so we are very, very, uh, you know, future solutions obsessed. Uh, so there's a lot of time and effort which goes into constantly assessing the needs, uh, the need gap in the market. Uh, as we spoke about it, like the, the, you know, clients, businesses are getting disrupted, consumer choices are getting disrupted with technology mm. and, and the, the, Solutions that are there in the market are also constantly evolving. Every six months, the, the face of the market changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very important that we are constantly sort of surfing that and coming up with the, and enhancing our solutions. So we invest a lot on, a lot on these capabilities. Uh, the second, of course, is that, the, uh, you know, uh, in, in partnership with the clients, uh, there's a lot of work we do to ensure that people are not only sort of doing advertising, creating work, which is only solving for business, uh, but also addresses clients' needs of sustainability and purpose-driven marketing. So that is an awareness and constant, uh, you know, effort at our end. Uh, none of this is uh, can be done without talent. So learning and development, which is very close to my heart, uh, we continue to invest very heavily in that because yeah. you need to continue, uh, you know, skilling up your people yeah. to... It's not like somebody else is going to do all of this. Yeah. It is our people only who are going to solve right. for it. So there are very structured L&D programs that we run. So those keep getting... Evol they, those evolve uh, year on year. Hmm. Uh, in fact, a lot of our uh, um, shops have qualified for things like Great Places to Work and other such, uh, which is, of course, we are very proud of. Uh, and last but not the least, I cannot... Uh, uh, end this part without uh, power of one, so which has been working very well for us in the market. Uh, clients are aware that it provides them seamless access to all our capabilities, no matter which part of the uh, group they are working with. Uh, mm. So that's worked very well. Uh, and that doesn't come to life without adequate sort of investment, training and talent and, and uh, you know, uh, so, so there's a lot of investment in that as yeah. well. So these are our focus areas. Thank you so much and all the best for that. Thank you very much and pleasure to have you here. It is time for a short break. On the other side, joining us in the studio, we have Nagma Mullah, who is the CEO of Edel Gift Foundation, the philanthropic initiative of Edelweiss Group.